everybody. How are you all today? Good. Before I share with you what I received from the Lord concerning President Trump, I just want to lay a preface how vitally important it is to pray for kings and for the nation. In 1995, I went to South Africa for the first time and I was in Johannesburg and uh, on the very first day that I was there, I was visited by a very mighty angel who identified himself as the Chief Prince Angel of South Africa. And he went on to give me some information about some of the things that had happened in the nation. It's like giving a report, you know. So, in 1994, there was a major general election in South Africa. And for the first time, the white rule that was going on for years was overthrown. And the first black president, Mandela, Nelson Mandela, was voted to become the president. So that, is, that was what happened in the nation. And the people around the world know about this. And they've been praying that something good, a good transition will take place in the nation. And this angel told me that what happened, the behind the scenes things that took place during or just before the election took place. Satan, this angel revealed to me, had planned a bloodbath in the nation so that the election will not take place. That was the plan, to keep the nation under bondage and to keep it fighting among themselves so that no progress is made. And knowing this, the Holy Spirit had alerted the Christians in South Africa to pray. And uh, the South Africans got word of this and they began to pray, and it sent prayer alert news all over the world. Christians began to pray for safety of the elections in South Africa. As a result of the prayer, massive prayer that was raised up for the nation, thousands of angels were sent by God to stand all around the perimeter of the nation. And they stood shoulder to shoulder all around the borders of the nation so that not even the smallest demon could pass through them to come and cause havoc or bloodbath in the nation. As a result of this angelic protection and intervention by God, the election went smoothly through without a single drop of blood. And then the angel went on to tell me uh, some other words for the nation, for the church and all that. And uh, I narrated this to the meet in the meeting that evening. And uh, there was all these oohs and the ahs and the ahs that usually follow, you know. And after the meeting, as we were going back home to the place where I had been put, my host, a pastor, he told me a very interesting testimony. He said, whatever you shared, whatever the angel of the Lord told you is 100% correct. He said, a few months before the election, one night, a police patrolman was going around doing his night duties. And in the middle of the night, as he was doing his rounds, he was shocked to find an angel suddenly appear before him. And he was shocked by the sight of the angel. So you try to imagine, you know, it's in the thick of the night. And you're all alone patrolling. And suddenly, someone appears before you. How will you feel? Even if it is any angel, you will say, Be gone, Satan. Right? That would be our normal reaction, you know. 
when he suddenly finds someone full of light from head to toe. So that was uh, his uh, reaction. And the angel told him, I've been sent by God to tell you to ask the Christians to pray for the election. This man was so scared, he didn't know how to react and uh, saying that the angel disappeared. So the following morning, he told this to his pastor and they all began to mobilize to pray. And the media got hurt about him and he was interviewed over radio and over television and the whole of South Africa heard the news. So Christians all over South Africa began to pray. And as a result, what I told you earlier took place. Thousands of angels came, stood all around the borders and the perimeter of South Africa so that the election went smoothly. And what this pastor also told me was the opposition party, the many tribal groups, they had actually planned a bloodbath of killing many prospective politicians so that the elections could not take place smoothly. They want to keep the nation divided. But God had a different plan. Amen. So it was the plan of God that the nation of South Africa should be set free from bondage to serve its highest destiny. Amen. So in the same manner, I'm sure you all know that God has a wonderful plan and destiny for the United States of America. Do you? And I'm sure you all will agree with me if I say that this nation hasn't entered into the fullness of her destiny yet. Amen? You agree? So that is why God has now given you a good president. A man after God's own heart. Never before in the history of the U.S. you have ever had such a president like this. At least not in a long, long, long while. I know one thing for sure, you know. So this was um, before, now, before Obama, who was it? George Bush, right? Huh? Okay, Bush Senior, Bush Junior, right? And before them was Clinton. I think... Uh, Either it was uh, maybe during the, the term of Bush Jr. I was invited to speak at a conference in Michigan. And during the conference, I had a vision. And I saw how some of the past presidents of the U.S. finds four godly presidents. Four of them. Four of them really godly saints 
in heaven praying for the salvation of the United States. Who are the four? I don't know. Only I only saw one person, George Washington, kneeling down and praying with tears for the nation. And I saw his tears drop down and fall on the sand. And the Lord scooped the sand and has kept it, kept it in heaven. And the tear-filled sand speaks unto God, cries unto God for the salvation of this nation. In case if you are wondering how can tears pray, the Bible tells us in Genesis chapter 4 that the blood of Abel cried out to God. So it can, right? It has a voice to speak. On this earth, waters or wood may seem non-living thing, but not so in the heavenly realm. They all have the life of God. And they can speak just like us. So, now, after a long time, God has given this nation a respite. A respite meaning a time of rest, of grace, in the form of President Donald Trump. That I know beyond a shadow of doubt, and I'm sure you all know that by now, beyond all shadow of doubt, that you have been blessed with a godly, I don't know whether he's Holy Spirit filled or not, at least a born again president, yeah. right? A born again president who gives God preeminence in all things. He always starts his meetings with a prayer, right? Always starts with a prayer. Anyway, from the time that he was voted to office, two years have now passed by, and you all will be familiar that from the day that he took his oath till today, there's always attempts been made. To kick him out of office. Are you all aware of that? You all are aware of that. And as a result, thousands of Christians are praying for him round the clock for his safety and for his protection. Now, on the day that I left my home nation to come here for the school that uh, we have been doing for the past four days, so on the 13th of November, just two hours before I was to leave to take a flight to come to the U.S., I was just in my room minding my own business, doing some other stuff, when I had a visitation from an angel of the Lord. And this angel of the Lord, unlike other messenger angels who come to give a message, he had a drawn sword in his hand. And by the drawn sword, I knew he's not just an ordinary messenger angel, but he is an angel, a militant angel, belonging to the warrior class. So they are engaged in war, like the order of Michael. Michael is not just the only angel, you know, for war. He's the chief prince, and all the angels under him, they're all the warrior class. And they all have the surname Michael, last name, just like you all have last names. Sweet family, they all have sweet last names. So this angel came and he said, this is what he said. I have been sent to tell you to warn the Christians in the U.S. to pray for their president. Why? He is in danger of being impeached and removed from office. This has been going on for a long time, but now it has heightened because of the recent November election that brought in a greater number of Democrats who have vowed, you know that, right? I don't need to tell you all that. You know your own nation too well. But nevertheless, sometimes it's good for someone outside to come and remind us what is in store. So more so than in the past, now, with the tilt of balance in the judiciary and in your 
houses of the lawmakers. The, he is in danger of being impeached and removed from office. There are sinister forces working behind the veil on this. Several judges, attorneys, senators, congressmen, and even governors are working on it. Just to get rid of one man, a whole group of lawmakers are working so that they can legally kick him out for good, that he could not come back. Not just impeach with a warning, like how they did do President Bill Clinton over the Monica Lewinsky issue. He was just impeached with a warning, not kicked out. Whereas, for Mr. Trump, it's not just an impeachment, it's a dismissal. You don't want that to happen, do you? This is not the plan of God for him to be removed. It's not the plan of God. Because God has given you four years of grace. So it should be completed. Remaining two more years, right? So the two more years, he should complete his office so that you can have the fullness of your grace. So that God's plans are not thwarted or aborted. It can be aborted, short-lived, if Christians do nothing about it. If we don't do anything about it, then the plan can be killed. In Acts chapter 12, we read that the Apostle Peter was imprisoned by King Herod to be beheaded. That was the plan. And we read that the church in Jerusalem prayed all night, chain prayer for him. As a result of the prayer, an angel was dispatched by God to go and set Peter free. This is the story in Acts chapter 12. Now you try to imagine, what if the church had not prayed? What if the church had not prayed? They were all just too busy minding their own business. They had no time to pray or they care less to pray, thinking that some, if not me, somebody else will pray. If 1,000 people think like that, Another person will pray, another person will pray, and then nobody prays. So what would have happened to Peter? He would have been killed, right? The angel would not have been sent. So it is vitally important for the church to pray. So it is not the plan of God for him to be removed. And the final counsel was, ask the Christians in the U.S. to pray. So you must pray like never before. Because you, Mr. Trump is in the last phase of his office. Whether he is re-elected or not, that is secondary. We don't need to look at 2020 now. What's most important is to complete 18 and 19. Then we'll talk about the next term, you know. He, he too should be faithful and true to his call so that God can extend him one more time. He must also remain faithful and true. If he's not faithful and true to his calling, then God, will, God himself will remove him. So you don't want that to happen too, right? So we want to pray very, very hard. Amen? And I want to encourage you to get this book. God's Answer for America. A wonderful couple, Daryl and Cindy.